When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. In this video, we're going to talk about conjugate base and conjugate acids. Now, these words you should be quite familiar with by the end, hopefully. Conjugate base plus acid. And what that essentially is, and I'll go over that quickly, is the idea that, for example, in this, we have we talked about last video, how we have two water molecules. When they react, one will act as the acid, one will act as the base. So for example, here we've got H2O, and it has given off a protein, right? So, a proton, sorry. Here, this is the same as this. The difference being there's one that's hydrogen, one that's hydrogens, which means one that's protons. So in this case, this is the proton donor. It's donated a proton. And the opposite one, this one over here, what it has done is it was water molecule here, now it's a hydronium ion. So it has taken one extra hydrogen. So it's the proton acceptor. And we said that if something is the acceptor, it is the acid. So this water molecule, sorry, it's the base. This water molecule acts as the base, this one here. And the other one acts as the acid. But what we can now look at, if you look at the, because this says it's a reversible reaction. You see, the reaction can go the other way. It's reversible. What happens if we go the other way? What happens if we have this hydroxide group here grabbing a uh, hydrogen from here and going back to water? So this goes grabs one more hydrogen, so plus a hydrogen ion, which is just a proton. So if it grabs one more hydrogen ion, it is actually the acceptor, right? So it's the acceptor now. So for the reversible reaction, this one is the acceptor, whereas this one has given that hydrogen to a hydroxide group, so it has become, in the reversible reaction, it has become the donor. So the forward reaction, this is the donor, and this is the acceptor, and this water molecule makes this hydroxide group, and this water molecule makes this hydronium group. But if you go to the reverse reaction, we have the opposite happening. This hydroxide actually acts as the acceptor, so it is the base, because it accepts a proton, whereas this hydronium ion will give away, will donate a hydrogen, and thereby it itself is the acid. All right, so this one, and this one are linked together, but here it's acting as a acid, whereas on the, in the reversible way, it's acting as a base. And same with this water molecule is linked to this water molecule, but here it's acting as a base in the forward reaction, but in the reverse reaction, it will actually act as a donor because it's actually giving away a hydrogen. That's what we call conjugate acid and base. So in this case, this is the acid, and its conjugate base is this one here, because on the flip side, if it goes backwards, it's actually acting as a base, it's a conjugate base. And this one, on the forward reaction, is a base, but on the reverse reaction, because it's donating a proton, it's acting as a acid, so we call it the conjugate acid. And conjugate just means that they're, they're linked, so it's a link between the two. And so this hydrogen, this water molecule is linked to this hydroxide group, and this water molecule is linked to this hydronium group. In this case, yeah, so we said that one is the donation, but the reversible reaction it's the accepting. Right? So in one case it will act as the acid, and then the same one will react as an acceptor in the reverse reaction. And for the other one, water molecule, it will act as a proton acceptor in the one, the forward reaction, and then as a donor in the reverse reaction. That's just the idea of conjugate bases and acids. And the reason why I'm going to go over this is because the dot point itself says, describe the relationship between an acid and its conjugate base, and a base and a conjugate acid. So we have to talk about acids and its conjugate base, and a base and conjugate acid. So what I'll do first, I'm talking about acids. So, an acid will always have a conjugate base. And in the case of this one, we've got hydrochloric acid, which is a strong acid. And it, it's an acid because you can see here it's donated a actual, it's donated a hydrogen, so therefore it acts as a acid. 
And the reverse, if it were, go, were to go backwards, this chlorine ion, which is now being produced, would accept the hydrogen from hydronium ions, and it would become hydrochloric acid again. So now it would become a proton acceptor, because it would have accepted the proton of the hydrogen from hydronium. But the problem is, because you can see this is not a reversible reaction, this is only a that one that goes to completion, so it's not reversible. In this case, the reversible reaction never really happens. Chlorine ions are happy to stay chlorine ions. They won't grab the hydrogen off hydronium ions and become hydrochloric acid. And that's because a strong acid produces a very, very weak conjugate base. Right? So strong acids have a very weak conjugate base. And it's so weak that the reversible reaction never happens. And what I mean by weak is conjugate uh, base. What I mean by weak is that this chlorine ion has no intention of grabbing the hydrogen off hydronium. This one here. It's so happy to be as it is that it's just going to stay chlorine ion. So it's weak in terms of how it's going to be reacting. Right? There's going to be no backward reaction because it's going to stay the way it is. Hence, it's weak compared to a strong acid. Now, this next example is ethanoic acid, and ethanoic acid itself is actually a weak acid. So, ethanoic acid is weak, and what happens here? The ethanoic acid will donate a proton, and because it's a proton donator, proton donator, it is considered an acid, right? Because it's donating a proton. But if it goes the reversible reaction, in this case, it actually is reversible, but if it goes the reversible reaction, now it's acting as a proton acceptor. It's a CH3COO- here, grabs a proton, and then becomes CH3COOH again. So it has to accept it a proton. Right, so for the opposite, we have an acceptor. Now again, this in this case, actually it does happen a bit. The vast majority of it will be a, in the forward reaction, the forward reaction is favored, but some will go back. Some will go back to producing ethanoic acid. Right? Because we know that because it's in a equilibrium. So it's a, there's a reversible reaction happening. So in this case, some of it will actually, so that we have some of that conjugate base forming the strong acid again. So some of the reversible reaction will happen. So when it comes to weak acids, weak acids have a slightly stronger conjugate base. So it doesn't have to be a very strong, sometimes they are very strong, but sometimes they're only stronger than the weak, as the, the, the actual base is stronger than the equivalence from the strong acid. Right? So the, the weak acid has a slightly stronger conjugate base when compared to the conjugate base of the strong acid. So in this case, CH3COAH, this one, was stronger than the chlorine ions, which means that a bit more of it will go in the reversible reaction. Now for bases, it's very similar. So base always has a conjugate acid. An example I'm going to give is ammonium. Right? Ammonium, sorry, this is ammonia. Ammonia is an example of a strong Actually, a weak, a weakish, not not very weak, but a weaker base than, for example, sodium hydroxide. So it's a weaker base than sodium hydroxide. And when it it reacts with water, what happens is here we have NH3, and it will accept a proton. And by being the acceptor, it has acted as a base. So here it's the acceptor, which means it is the base. In the reversible reaction, what happens here is this ammonium ion can grab hydrogen, sorry, can give away a hydrogen to the water, to this OH, to become water again. So if this gives away the hydrogen to the OH group, it is, it is acted as the donor. Right? So in the reversible reaction is a donor, which means it would be the acid. So the conjugate acid is weak compared to the stronger base. So the example of NH3, this is a, a relatively weak 
base and it will produce a sometimes it can be to produce a conjugate acid which is stronger so they can often they will often produce a strong conjugate acid but what it's definitely going to do is definitely going to produce a stronger conjugate acid than a strong base would because a strong base such as sodium hydroxide always produces a weak conjugate acid conjugate acid right? so just to sum this up you should know that there if every base and every acid has its conjugate base or acid you should know that a strong base will produce a very weak conjugate acid a weak base will produce a slightly stronger conjugate acid than it is the case with strong bases and the same goes for acids so a strong acid such as hydrochloric acid will produce a very weak conjugate base which means it goes to completion there's no there's no reversible reaction when it comes to hydrochloric acid and a slightly weaker acid such as ethnoic acid will produce a stronger conjugate base than a strong acid would right? that's what you should know for a stop point and you should also know that just what happens so the one in the forward reaction for example this base would, would act as the hydrogen the proton acceptor but in the reversible reaction it would act as the hydrogen donor which is why we call it the acid and the conjugate acid because this one here acts as a base whereas this one here acts same one just in the reverse reaction acts as the acid thereby this here is the conjugate acid of this base so that's the main idea you should get from this video just what a conjugate acid is and then the strings of con strong conjugate as uh, strong bases and acids and their weak conjugate bases and acids compared to your weak base and acids which have a stronger conjugate acid and base i hope that was useful thank you for watching